In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... ...is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. The path to happiness is not the easy one, but taking drugs will not make it easier. Many people got lost and end up losing their life to drugs. If you or anyone that you know is within that path, don't be afraid to seek for help. Visit www.adk.gov.my for information related to drug abuse. So, know your path. This message is brought to you by the National Anti-Drugs Agency. Where I wanted to quit, in the back of my mind, I told myself, I have to quit. And just that day when I reached for that cigarette, I'll never forget it, with my son looking at me. And it was like a bolt of lightning hit me, where I finally realized the big picture of what year after year and cigarette after cigarette had done. And I said, that's it. I'm done. I quit. Took them, a whole pack, brand new pack. Took them, threw them out the window, and I don't litter. But I was, that's it. I'm done. I quit. I know it's going to kill me. It's going to be cancer. If I don't have to make it sooner than it needs to be. He, he was shocked, and he said, I really hope he means that mom. You're listening to Straight No Chaser. So let's get back to your girl Ambezi, Pastor C, Thin Bad, and the Chief. Oh, good folks, we are back. We are back. We've been we've been talking about Governor of Virginia and, and others that don't seem to recognize, especially during their adult years, that blackface, minstrel shows, and anything similar to that kind of activity is offensive. It, it's degrading and and pretty much just plain stupid. Making inappropriate references to slavery, the Holocaust, segregation, or any other suffering by a race of people is off limits completely. Now, how much clearer can that be? I think that's pretty clear. But I fail to see how grown (laughs) professional medical students (laughs) slated to take a Hippocratic oath, you know, found glee in in, in dressing as Klansmen or or, or minstrels. I I just hear any explanation that could make me say, oh, okay, I get it now. I get it. Mm -hmm. There is no explanation, you know, but, you know, go ahead and put that hood back on. It's okay. We we got it. We understand. (laughs) You know, we understand. But, you you know, it's it's just it's just crazy. I mean, the whole thing is crazy. And we're not talking about high school students, which would be bad enough. We're not talking about uh, we're not even talking about undergrads. We're talking about professional folks, doctors who are, Mm -hmm. you know, in this particular case, going into the field of medicine. Right. That's going to be, you know, have patients of color. Right. You know, and things like exactly. that, you know, it just I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. You know, mm. I can't really figure this this thing out. This is just ridiculous. And it seems to be in, instead of it being less and less, you know, um, we're, we're finding it more and more right. every every couple of months. Someone is, is coming out with, you know, with some kind of, oh, I think blackface was all right. You know, a few <laughs> months ago, we had someone saying, oh, well, it was OK when I was growing up. I'm like, I don't it's know when you were growing up. She's. She's younger than me, you know, <laughs> but um, but, you know, the whole thing, the, the other piece about that is just that it's not just 
that one person decided that they would be in blackface or and and then they said oh well let me get somebody else to be a clansman or the other way around whatever it was so you got two people into it right and then they go to the party and then someone takes a picture of it because they say oh this is a memorable moment let's take this picture and right. then it goes further and now put in the it yearbook. has to go yeah, we'll put it in the yearbook, which means it has to go through a whole editing staff. Right. So everybody is complicit. So it's not just, you know, the, the people in the picture, but it's everyone else. It's the whole system, which is which has really been the problem all along. But we, we've joined here. We've got Dr. Green. Um, just just and all the things that you've seen. All the, you know, the the marches and all of the the, the civil rights movement activity that you've been in. How do you how do you, it, it's got to. It's got to, you got to be like, here we go all over again. Well, but, no, but, but. I, I think the, the big issue here is no penalty. Yes. People think yet sometimes today that because of who they are, where they've been, where they've gone to school, that they can do certain things to others, and there's no penalty. The thing that really amazed me uh, about the governor uh, I read in the paper, I guess yesterday, that he's a member of a predominantly black church. Hmm. Is That's that correct. true? Is That's that correct. Yes. In uh, Southern Virginia, I believe. Yes. Yeah. That's CNN yeah. fact checked. And <laughs> so if that's true, uh, he had to carry the burden, if there was a burden. He had to carry the burden of knowing that he engaged in behavior years ago that mm. was very offensive to the very people that he was worshiping with. Wow. And and so, you know, it, it's not that whites and persons of power who discriminate against others, like our president, uh, is not aware of, of, of what they are doing mm-hmm. is harmful. They know it's harmful. Like President Trump, for example, uh, gave orders that one of the dealers at his casino uh, uh, um, on the East Coast had to be moved because whites wouldn't deal, wouldn't uh, relate and work with a black uh, uh, dealer. Wow. When people in the casino, they want to win money. Right. And if they think they can win money with a black dealer or a Hispanic <laughs> dealer or white, they're going to they're gonna get, sit at that table and gamble. So again, it, it is a level of ignorance. Yes. A, a level of, I call it insanity. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and people engage in insane behavior, then they want you to respond in a sane way. Right. They treat you in an illogical way, as Dr. King used to say, and then they want you to be logical about it. <laughs> you know, they treat you in an irrational way, and Dr. King would say, then they want you to behave rational. Mm. It right. doesn't, you know, it doesn't work that way. So again, um, we have a long ways to go uh, yes. uh, in this country. We made great progress. You know, you just can't go out and indiscriminately lynch people like you did and get away with it years ago. Dr. King wrote a letter uh, to Lyndon Baines Johnson, and I've got to get a copy of that, a brother blow. Uh, Years, uh, let's see, it was about a year before his assassination, 50 black men in the states of Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia were lynched or killed for simply trying to get blacks registered to vote. Wow. And so uh, I got this story from Andy Young. Andy Young tells me, that story, my, my, he's a good friend of mine, by the way. He was the one that recruited me to work for Dr. King. Andrew said they went to meet with Lyndon Baines Johnson, and his response was, that's terrible. Let's put forth a voting rights bill mm. uh, or an anti-lynch bill, I'm sorry. And, and Andrew Young said no. We want uh, we want a uh, civil rights bill mm. that will deal with all forms of discrimination, including murder. Yes. So uh, we we've come a long ways, but we yet have a long ways to go. I, I guess t- uh, my point again, coming back to the governor of Virginia, uh, and those in that during his time in medical school, that was not a terrible thing. They were. Mm. Young medical students having a good time, (laughs) having a good time at the expense of others. Right. And, uh, you know, it comes back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, It's like principals of schools who uh, in some way 
Uh, do not treat kids fair. See, we have to remember as adults that children, a lot of parents don't understand this, mm. grew up to be adults. Right. And if you... <laughs> <laughs> so if you, you grew up that way, you're going to pass it down. Well, the other critical thing is there's some data indicating that men who and women who abuse their parents... Mm. As old, older adults, mm-hmm. that they were abused by those same parents when they were small. Right. And so, what so it's parents retaliation. Yeah, what parents don't, yeah, what parents don't right. understand is that <laughs> little toddler that you <laughs> push and shove around, one day is going to be an adult male or an adult female. Mm-hmm. So that's unfortunate. That's that cycle of, and again, it comes back to the cycle of discrimination. Mm. Uh, hopefully, those of us who are in a leadership role in the black community will not find ways to be evil and, uh, and do evil things to people that we perceive as not having power. Right. To, or to anybody. So mm-hmm. uh, we, we yet have a challenge in America. Donald Trump, he says the things that he says because he feels he can get away with it. Right. Take, t- take an example of him imitating Governor Romney's walk. <laughs> Uh, he says he walks like a what was it like a, a penguin or yeah oh, with a waddle uh, with yeah. a waddle. I mean, <laughs> in America politics, you don't do you don't degrade uh, the physical uh, uh, characteristics right. uh, of another individual or how he called Hillary Clinton a nasty right. woman yep. yeah for all that time yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the thing is he was able to pull a segment of the American population with him. So we have a challenge ahead of us, uh, and we need to keep working at it on a day-to-day basis. Racism does not run away. Those mm-hmm. who are in positions of power like that power for some reason and enjoy uh, abusing others. And all I can say is that we need to stick together and work together to make sure this kind of discrimination ends. Blackface is a form of discrimination. It's humiliating. Step and fetching, and all of them, mm-hmm. uh, uh, pick me, pick me, marking, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. all, all those folks play those roles to make a dime. Mm. And it's, it's a shame that they had to play those roles to make a living. Wow, and and another thing about it is that it's just it's one of those things where today America is already so much more d- diverse than it used to be. So I remember when we had the conversation about um, women being abused sexually with the whole sexual harassment thing. And we basically came to the conclusion that it's really up to the men to hold other men accountable. So in the age where we have where we do have all these other white Americans who are with us trying to trying to protest against these social injustices and stuff like that. They also have to go back. It's great that you're protesting with us, but you also have to go back to your friends and your family and the people in your community who you know are not on the same page as you and educate them and make them kind of move towards the same goal as well. I think there's a disconnect there because, you know, I've met people who, have done extraordinary things in the community at my age. You know, they, they've they made sure that they go with other black students as they protest, whatever they need to protest and stuff like that. But it's like, okay, so at the end of the day, you need to go back to your frat house or back to your sorority house and tell all those girls, tell all those guys everything that you did and why and educate them the way that you've been educated to have this change of heart or change of mind. So you're absolutely right. Um, educating yourself is just the first step. Absolutely. The second step is educating those around you. Yes. Uh, I have three sons and uh, I, my wife and I always kept our home open. Mm-hmm. We would, as a matter of fact, encourage our sons to bring their friends to the house mm-hmm. uh, to study. Because we wanted to know who their friends were. Yes. And it was also an opportunity for them to see how a family works together, mm-hmm. how a family stays together. And my, 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 it, it had an impact. My, young, my youngest son, Kevin, we used to call him the little United Nations <laughs> because he had Arab friends, he had Jewish, he had friends from every segment of life. Awesome. And, and, he, and he kept up with a lot of those kids today 
Uh, one's um, Dr. Marco Wynn mm -hmm. is an outstanding uh, Asian uh, physician mm -hmm. whom I believe would never.